a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Leonardo da Vinci Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, more commonly Leonardo da Vinci or simply Leonardo, was an Italian Renaissance polymath whose areas of interest included invention, painting, sculpting, architecture, science, music, mathematics, engineering, literature, anatomy, geology, astronomy, botany, writing, history, and cartography. He has been variously called the father of paleontology, ignology, and architecture, and is widely considered one of the greatest painters of all time. Sometimes credited with the inventions of the parachute, helicopter and tank, he epitomized the Renaissance humanist ideal. Many historians and scholars regard Leonardo as the prime exemplar of the universal genius, or Renaissance man, an individual of unquenchable curiosity, and feverishly inventive imagination. And he is widely considered one of the most diversely talented individuals ever to have lived. According to art historian Helen Gardner, the scope and depth of his interests were without precedent in recorded history, and his mind and personality seem to us superhuman, while the man himself mysterious and remote. Marco Rossi notes that while there is much speculation regarding his life and personality, his view of the world was logical rather than mysterious, and that the empirical methods he employed were unorthodox for his time. Born out of wedlock to a notary, Piero da Vinci, and a peasant woman, Caterina, in Vinci in the region of Florence, Leonardo was educated in the studio of the renowned Florentine painter Andrea del Verrocchio. Much of his earlier working life was spent in the service of Ludovico il Moro in Milan. He later worked in Rome, Bologna, and Venice and he spent his last years in France at the home awarded to him by Francis I of France. Leonardo was, and is, renowned primarily as a painter. Among his works, the Mona Lisa is the most famous and most parodied portrait and the Last Supper the most reproduced religious painting of all time. Leonardo's drawing of the Vitruvian Man is also regarded as a cultural icon, being reproduced on items as varied as the Euro coin, textbooks, and t-shirts. A painting by Leonardo, Salvador Mundi, sold for a world record $450.3 million at a Christie's auction in New York, the 15th of November 2017, the highest price ever paid for a work of art. Perhaps 15 of his paintings have survived. Nevertheless, these few works, together with his notebooks, which contain drawings, scientific diagrams, and his thoughts on the nature of painting, compose a contribution to later generations of artists rivaled only by that of his contemporary, Michelangelo. Leonardo is revered for his technological ingenuity. He conceptualized flying machines, a type of armored fighting vehicle, concentrated solar power, an adding machine, and the double hull. Relatively few of his designs were constructed or even feasible during his lifetime, as the modern scientific approaches to metallurgy and engineering were only in their infancy during the Renaissance. Some of his smaller inventions, however, such as an automated bobbin winder and a machine for testing the tensile strength of wire, entered the world of manufacturing unheralded. A number of Leonardo's most practical inventions are nowadays displayed as working models at the Museum of Vinci. He made substantial discoveries in anatomy, civil engineering, geology, optics, and hydrodynamics, but he did not publish his findings, and they had no direct influence on later science. Childhood 1452-1466 Leonardo was born on 15 April 1452, at the third hour of the night, in the Tuscan hill town of Vinci, in the lower valley of the Arno River in the territory of the Medici-ruled Republic of Florence. He was the out-of-wedlock son of the wealthy Messer Piero Fruosino di Antonio da Vinci, a Florentine legal notary, and Caterina, a peasant. Leonardo had no surname in the modern sense. Da Vinci, simply meaning, of Vinci. His full birth name was, Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, meaning, Leonardo, of Ser Piero from Vinci. The inclusion of the title, Ser, indicated that Leonardo's father was a gentleman. Little is known about Leonardo's early life. He spent his first five years in the hamlet of Anchiano in the home of his mother, and, from 1457 lived in the household of his father grandparents and uncle in the small town of Vinci. His father had married a 16-year-old girl named Alpiero Amadori, who loved Leonardo, 
but died young in 1465 without children. When Leonardo was 16, his father married again to 20-year-old Francesca Lanfredini, who also died without children. Piero's legitimate heirs were born from his third wife Margherita di Guglielmo and his fourth and final wife, Lucrezia Cortigiani. In all, Leonardo had twelve half-siblings, who were much younger than him and with whom he had very few contacts but they caused him difficulty after his father's death in the dispute over the inheritance. Leonardo received an informal education in Latin, geometry and mathematics. In later life, Leonardo recorded only two childhood incidents. One, which he regarded as an omen, was when a kite dropped from the sky and hovered over his cradle, its tail feathers brushing his face. The second occurred while he was exploring in the mountains. He discovered a cave and was both terrified that some great monster might lurk there, and driven by curiosity to find out what was inside. Leonardo's early life has been the subject of historical conjecture. Vasari, the 16th century biographer of Renaissance painters, tells a story of Leonardo as a very young man. A local peasant made himself a round shield and requested that Ser Piero have it painted for him. Leonardo responded, with a painting of a monster spitting fire that was so terrifying that Ser Piero sold it to a Florentine art dealer, who sold it to the Duke of Milan. Meanwhile, having made a profit, Ser Piero bought a shield decorated with a heart pierced by an arrow, which he gave to the peasant. Verrocchio's Workshop 1476 in 1466, at the age of 14, Leonardo was apprenticed to the artist Andrea di Cione, known as Verrocchio, whose bottega was one of the finest in Florence. He apprenticed as a garzon to Andrea del Verrocchio, the leading Florentine painter and sculptor of his day. Other famous painters apprenticed or associated with the workshop include Domenico Ghirlandaio, Perugino, Botticelli, and Lorenzo di Credi. Leonardo would have been exposed to both theoretical training and a vast range of technical skills, including drafting, chemistry, metallurgy, metalworking, plaster casting, leatherworking, mechanics and carpentry as well as the artistic skills of drawing, painting, sculpting, and modeling. Much of the painted production of Verrocchio's workshop was done by his employees. According to Vasari, Leonardo collaborated with Verrocchio on his The Baptism of Christ, painting the young angel holding Jesus' robe in a manner that was so far superior to his masters that Verrocchio put down his brush and never painted again, although this is believed to be apocryphal. Close examination reveals areas that have been painted or touched up over the tempera using the new technique of oil paint. The Landscape the rocks seen through the brown mountain stream and much of the figure of Jesus bearing witness to the hand of Leonardo. Leonardo may have been the model for two works by Varrocchio, the bronze statue of David in the Bargello and the archangel Raphael in Tobias, and the angel. By 1472, at the age of 20, Leonardo qualified as a master in the Guild of St. Luke, the Guild of Artists, and Doctors of Medicine, but even after his father set him up in his own workshop. His attachment to Verrocchio was such that he continued to collaborate with him. Leonardo's earliest known dated work is a drawing in pen and ink of the Arna Valley, drawn on 5 August 1473. Professional Life 1476-1513 Florentine court records of 1476 show that Leonardo and three other young men were charged with sodomy, but acquitted. Homosexual acts were illegal in Renaissance Florence. From that date until 1478 there is no record of his work or even of his whereabouts. In 1478, he left Verrocchio's studio and was no longer a resident at his father's house. One writer, called the Anonimo Gadiano, claims that in 1480 Leonardo was living with the Medici and working in the garden of the Piazza San Marco in Florence, a Neoplatonic academy of artists, poets and philosophers that the Medici had established. In January 1478, he received an independent commission to paint an altarpiece for the chapel of St. Bernard in the Palazzo Vecchio. In March 1481, he received a second independent commission for the adoration of the Magi for the monks of San Donato as Scope II. Neither commission was completed, the second being interrupted when Leonardo went to Milan. In 1482, Leonardo, who according to Vasari was a talented musician, created a silver lyre in the shape of a horse's head. 
Lorenzo de' Medici sent Leonardo to Milan, bearing the lyre as a gift, to secure peace with Ludovico Sforza, Duke of Milan. At this time Leonardo wrote an often quoted letter describing the many marvelous and diverse things that he could achieve in the field of engineering and informing Ludovico that he could also paint. Leonardo worked in Milan, from 1482 until 1499. He was commissioned to paint the Virgin of the Rocks for the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception and the Last Supper for the Monastery of Santa Maria del Grazie. In the spring of 1485, Leonardo traveled to Hungary on behalf of Ludovico to meet Matthias Corvinus, for whom he is believed to have painted a holy family. Between 1493 and 1495, Leonardo listed a woman called Caterina among his dependents in his taxation documents. When she died in 1495, the list of funeral expenditures suggests that she was his mother. Leonardo was employed on many different projects for Ludovico, including the preparation of floats and pageants for special occasions, designs for a dome for Milan Cathedral and a model for a huge equestrian monument to Francesco Sforza, Ludovico's predecessor. Seventy tons of bronze were set aside for casting it. The monument remained unfinished for several years, which was not unusual for Leonardo. In 1492, the clay model of the horse was completed. It surpassed in size the only two large equestrian statues of the Renaissance, Donatello's Gatta Milata in Padua, and Verrocchio's Bartolomeo Colleoni in Venice, and became known as the Gran Cavallo. Leonardo began making detailed plan for its casting, however, Michelangelo insulted Leonardo by implying that he was unable to cast it. In November 1494, Ludovico gave the bronze to be used for cannon, to defend the city from invasion by Charles VIII. At the start of the Second Italian War in 1499, the invading French troops used the life-size clay model for the Gran Cavallo for target practice. With Ludovico Sforza overthrown, Leonardo, with his assistant Salian friend, the mathematician Luca Pacioli, fled Milan for Venice, where he was employed as a military architect and engineer, devising methods to defend the city from naval attack. On his return to Florence in 1500, he and his household were guests of the Servite monks at the monastery of Santissima Annunziata and were provided with a workshop where, according to Vasari, Leonardo created the cartoon of the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne and Saint John the Baptist a work that won such admiration that, men, and women, young and old, flocked to see it, as if they were attending a great festival. In Cesena in 1502, Leonardo entered the service of Cesare Borgio, the son of Pope Alexander VI, acting as a military architect and engineer, and traveling throughout Italy with his patron. Leonardo created a map of Cesare Borgia's stronghold, a town plan of Imola in order to win his patronage. Maps were extremely rare at the time and it would have seemed like a new concept. Upon seeing it, Cesare hired Leonardo as his chief military engineer and architect. Later in the year, Leonardo produced another map for his patron, one of Chiana Valley, Tuscany, so as to give his patron a better overlay of the land and greater strategic position. He created this map in conjunction with his other project of constructing a dam from the sea to Florence in order to allow a supply of water to sustain the canal during all seasons. Leonardo returned to Florence, where he rejoined the Guild of St. Luke on 18 October 1503. He spent two years designing and painting a mural of the Battle of Anghiari for the Signoria, with Michelangelo designing its companion piece, the Battle of Cascina. In Florence in 1504, he was part of a committee formed to relocate, against the artist's will. Michelangelo's statue of David. In 1506 Leonardo returned to Milan. Many of his most prominent pupils or followers in painting either knew or worked with him in Milan, including Bernardino Luini, Giovanni Antonio Boltraffio and Marco Doggiono. At this time he may have commenced a project for an equestrian figure of Charles II d'Ambes, the acting French governor of Milan. A wax model survives and, if genuine, is the only extant example of Leonardo's sculpture. Leonardo did not stay in Milan for long, because his father had died in 1504, and in 1507 he was back in Florence trying to sort out problems with his brothers over his father's estate. By 1508 Leonardo was back in Milan, living in his own house in Portuori on Tal in the parish of Santa Babala. 
Old Age and Death, 1513-1519. From September 1513 to 1516, under Pope Leo X, Leonardo spent much of his time living in the Belvedere in the Vatican in Rome, where Raphael and Michelangelo were both active at the time. In October 1515, King Francis I of France recaptured Milan. On 19 December, Leonardo was present at the meeting of Francis I and Pope Leo X, which took place in Bologna. Leonardo was commissioned to make for Francis a mechanical lion that could walk forward and open its chest to reveal a cluster of lilies. In 1516, he entered Francis' service, being given the use of the manor house Clos Luce now a public museum, near the king's residence at the royal Chateau d'Armes. He spent the last three years of his life here, accompanied by his friend and apprentice, Count Francesco Melzi, and supported by a pension totaling 10,000 scudi. Leonardo died at Clos Luce, on 2 May 1519 at the age of 67. The cause is generally stated to be recurrent stroke. This diagnosis is consistent with accounts of the state of Leonardo's alleged remains as described in 1863. Francis I had become a close friend. Vasari records that the king held Leonardo's head in his arms as he died, although this story, beloved by the French and portrayed in romantic paintings by Angra, Menaggio and other French artists, as well as by Angelica Kaufman, may be legend rather than fact. Vasari states that in his last days, Leonardo sent for a priest to make his confession and to receive the Holy Sacrament. In accordance with his will, sixty beggars followed his casket. Melzi was the principal heir and executor, receiving, as well as money, Leonardo's paintings, tools, library and personal effects. Leonardo also remembered his other longtime pupil and companion, Sly, and his servant Batista de Vilasis who each received half of Leonardo's vineyards. His brothers received land, and his serving woman received a black cloak, of good stuff, with a fur edge. Leonardo da Vinci was buried in the chapel of Saint Hubert in Chateau d'Armes in France. Some twenty years after Leonardo's death, Francis was reported by the goldsmith and sculptor Benvenuto Cellini as saying, There had never been another man born in the world who knew as much as Leonardo, not so much about painting, sculpture and architecture, as that he was a very great philosopher. Location of Remains Leonardo's remains were originally interred in the chapel of St. Florentin at the Chateau d'Armes in the Loire Valley. However, following the chapel's destruction in 1802, the whereabouts of Leonardo's remains became subject to dispute. While excavating the site in 1863 the poet Arsenaouassi found a partially complete skeleton and stone fragments bearing the inscription E.O. Dus Vink. The unusually large skull led Arsenaouassi to conclude he had located the remains of Leonardo, which were reinterred in their present location of the chapel of St. Hubert, also at the Chateau d'Armes. Reflecting doubts about the attribution, a plaque above the tomb states that the remains are only presumed to be those of Leonardo. In 2016 it was announced that DNA tests were to be conducted to investigate the veracity of the attribution, with results expected in 2019. Florence, Leonardo's artistic and social background Florence at the time of Leonardo's youth was the center of Christian humanist thought and culture. Leonardo commenced his apprenticeship with Verrocchio in 1466, the year that Verrocchio's master, the great sculptor Donatello, died. The painter Uccello, whose early experiments with perspective were to influence the development of landscape painting, was a very old man. The painters Piero della Francesca and Filippo Lippi, sculptor Luca della Robbia, and architect and writer Leon Battista Alberti were in their sixties. The successful artists of the next generation were Leonardo's teacher Verrocchio, Antonio del Polluolo, and the portrait sculptor Mino de Fiesole. The latter's lifelike busts give the most reliable likenesses of Lorenzo Medici's father Piero and uncle Giovanni. Leonardo's youth was spent in a Florence that was ornamented by the works of these artists and by Donatello's contemporaries, Masaccio, whose figurative frescoes were imbued with realism and emotion, and Ghiberti, whose gates of paradise, gleaming with gold leaf, displayed the art of combining complex figure compositions with detailed architectural backgrounds. Piero della Francesca had made a detailed study of perspective, and was the first painter to make a scientific study of light. These studies, 
and Alberti's treatise to picture a were to have a profound effect on younger artists and in particular on Leonardo's own observations and artworks. Masaccio's Expulsion from the Garden of Eden, depicting the naked and distraught Adam and Eve created a powerfully expressive image of the human form, cast into three dimensions by the use of light and shade, which was to be developed in the works of Leonardo in a way that was to be influential in the course of painting. The humanist influence of Donatello's David can be seen in Leonardo's late paintings, particularly John the Baptist. A prevalent tradition in Florence was the small altarpiece of the Virgin and Child. Many of these were created in tempera or glazed terracotta by the workshops of Filippo Lippi, Verrocchio and the prolific Della Robbia family. Leonardo's early Madonnas such as the Madonna with the Carnation and the Benoit Madonna followed this tradition while showing idiosyncratic departures particularly in the case of the Benoit Madonna in which the Virgin is set at an oblique angle to the picture space with the Christ Child at the opposite angle. This compositional theme was to emerge in Leonardo's later paintings such as the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne. Leonardo was a contemporary of Botticelli, Domenico Ghirlandaio, and Perugino, who were all slightly older than he was. He would have met them at the workshop of Verrocchio with whom they had associations, and at the Academy of the Medici. Botticelli was a particular favorite of the Medici family, and thus his success as a painter was assured. Ghirlandaio and Perugino were both prolific and ran large workshops. They competently delivered commissions to well-satisfied patrons who appreciated Ghirlandaio's ability to portray the wealthy citizens of Florence within large religious frescoes and Perugino's ability to deliver a multitude of saints and angels of unfailing sweetness and innocence. These are three were among those commissioned to paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel, the work commencing with Perugino's employment in 1479. Leonardo was not part of this prestigious commission. His first significant commission, the Adoration of the Magi for the Monks of Scope II, was never completed. In 1476, during the time of Leonardo's association with Verrocchio's workshop, the Portinari altarpiece by Hugo van der Goes arrived in Florence, bringing from northern Europe new painterly techniques that were to profoundly affect Leonardo, Ghirlandaio, Perugino and others. In 1479, the Sicilian painter Antonello de Messina, who worked exclusively in oils, traveled north on his way to Venice where the leading painter Giovanni Bellini adopted the technique of oil painting, quickly making it the preferred method in Venice. Leonardo was also later to visit Venice. Like the two contemporary architects Bramante and Antonio de San Gallo the Elder, Leonardo experimented with designs for centrally planned churches, a number of which appear in his journals, as both plans and views. Although none was ever realized, Leonardo's political contemporaries were Lorenzo Medici, who was three years older, and his younger brother Giuliano, who was slain in the Pazzi conspiracy in 1478. Leonardo was sent as an ambassador by the Medici court to Ludovico il Moro, who ruled Milan between 1479 and 1499. With Alberti, Leonardo visited the home of the Medici and through them came to know the older humanist philosophers of whom Marsiglio Ficino, proponent of Neoplatonism, Crito Forolongdino, writer of commentaries on classical writings, and John Argyropoulos, teacher of Greek and translator of Aristotle were the foremost. Also associated with the Academy of the Medici was Leonardo's contemporary, the brilliant young poet and philosopher Pico della Mirandola. Leonardo later wrote in the margin of a journal, The Medici made me and the Medici destroyed me. While it was through the action of Lorenzo that Leonardo received his employment at the court of Milan, it is not known exactly what Leonardo meant. By this cryptic comment, although usually named together as the three giants of the High Renaissance, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael were not of the same generation. Leonardo was 23 when Michelangelo was born and 31 when Raphael was born. Raphael lived until the age of only 37 and died in 1520, the year after Leonardo died, but Michelangelo went on creating for another 45 years. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?